Today's devotion continues uh, our, our walk through the small called articles. Um, this is again, this is we're still in part two, and this is the fourth article of part two. And at its core, what it's talking about is the Pope. I want to, I'm going to do my best not to get off on tangents here. And I'm going to do my best as I, I, as I always do to try and keep it under five minutes to varying degrees of, uh, of effectiveness. Um, but the, the core of what Luther is, is writing here, the, the core of this part of the confession is that, um, there is no divinely appointed head of the church other than Christ. Okay. Um, so that is to say, um, the Pope does not have some divine authority to be the sole head of the church, which at the time this was written, that was in, in the Roman Catholic Church, that was the case. The Pope had supreme authority by quote unquote divine right. And and what Luther is saying is, you know, you can't make that argument. Uh, he said maybe there's a little bit of a better argument for saying he's there by human authority. So we decide to put him in charge. So there's a unity um, there. There's a leadership, which I think there's a fair argument for putting putting someone in charge to help with uniformity, to help with uh, institutional organization, right? Um, if you've ever made a decision on, on your own versus in a committee, you, you, like you know from experience, decisions that are made by a single person tend to go much more quickly and be executed much more efficiently. Um, and obviously there are weaknesses to that, but so all of that, Luther is writing this about the Pope during his day, during his age. And the question uh, quickly becomes, you know, why do we care? How does that impact us? Well, I think what, what we can take away from this is how we treat really just clergies, clergy, uh, pastors, district presidents, synodical presidents, if those words mean nothing to you, check out our podcast on, I think it's titled something along the lines of the hierarchy of the LCMS. Um, because there is, is, we are not divinely appointed like rulers or leaders of the church. So for my example at Edgewater, I am a leader at the church, but I am not some divinely appointed whatever, where what I say goes, right? I have an opinion. I will share that opinion. I, I like to think that for the most part, my opinions are theologically informed. Um, but it is, it is not my church. I am a servant of the church. Now, that's not to say pastors hold sort of a unique role in the church in what we're called to do and how we're called to go about it. Um, but it's not it's not a position of, of like some supreme authority. So if you're if you're making a decision as your church, I would encourage you seek out your pastor's input. If you're at Edgewater, I, I think it is appropriate that I sit on our, our different leadership teams and I and I speak at those as um, as appropriate, I guess, as I have things to say. However, my word is not law. Um, and, and if you're not a member of Edgewater and you have some other church, you have to keep in mind, like your pastor's word is not law. Um, respect, respect whoever it is, obviously, like genuinely listen to what they have to say, e even if you disagree with it. Um, but I, I think that's kind of what we, we can take away from this, right? In, in that, um, there, there is no divinely appointed head of the church other than Christ. And, and that applies to the greater church at large. That also applies to our little churches. So kind of keep that in. And, and I think that applies most, for most of us, the most applicable part of that would be how we treat um, 
our pastors and the leaders at our local church. So if you have questions, if you have comments, go ahead and put them below. I think I did pretty good with not getting off on tangents and staying on time. Um, and uh, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.